We gotta be close. This is one of the uh, creepier things I think I've ever done. Hey everybody, Syntax 77 here. It is mid-January, winter. I am in New Hampshire, not too far from the main border, about 60 miles south of Canada. And we're about to do three days of some winter backpacking and camping out here in the uh, snow, apparently. You can hear a little logging activity in the distance there. We'll probably get away from that soon as we head into the woods. I got my trailhead over there. I got snow on the ground three days ahead of me. Just gonna try to have a little fun in the woods and uh, maybe a little history too on a more somber note. Um, well, we'll get into that as we go. But I got the Jeep parked up. I got, uh, unlike my last trip, some actual snowshoes which means i probably won't need them but uh after what happened last time when i didn't have them i'll take that risk and uh i got some fun food my wife packed up her favorite backpack well it's like a cooler backpack uh she packed up the turret with some real food for this backpacking trip as well as some fun meals for when i get out of the woods hopefully we get out of the woods um, so I'm going to transfer that into my backpack, <laughs> which is back there. Nice and small, right? I got the old Kaika pack there with all kinds of uh, winter gear and all kinds of goodies. I'll reluctantly put that on my back and we're going to head into the woods over here. That is the trailhead. So let's do it let's see what happens it's about 20 degrees right now i think it might go down into the teens or maybe 10 degrees i got a little bit of light flurries coming down but honestly even though i'm in the edge of the white mountains which is known for some of the worst weather in the world uh knock on wood my forecast looks pretty good it's not going to go below zero i don't think and more importantly, uh, doesn't seem to be a threat of high winds or snow squalls or storms or anything like that. So let's uh, do it. Oh, you even got a community bookshelf here. It's actually a house right there, some other houses around. I don't think I'll be taking a book, but that's cool. Conservation easement land. A little waterfall over there. Some blue blazes. Snow under my feet. And we're about to get away from the road into the woods. got here yellow trail Philbrook farm that way Mount Crag won't be doing that but that's over there and continuation of Austin Brook this way right now we're on an old logging road which is making for a pretty easy grade and uh, only got a few miles today 3.5 less than four and maybe 1,400, 1,500 feet of elevation gain. Unfortunately, a lot of that is packed into the last mile or so. Um, or you can say, fortunately, for the first few miles, it's pretty mild. Although, it only took me about <laughs> a few hundred steps to realize I'm already sick of wearing these snowshoes and I really don't need them. Not right now, at least. They do have some nice teeth on them. Uh, you can see that. So that would be good for traction if I need it later too. And of course, if the snow is deep, um, it'll make me float. But when you're walking in, you don't need them. Well, it's about a pound and a half on each foot wearing you down. So 
<laughs> I think I might already have decided to throw them on my pack after all. But my plan today is after this three or four miles, um, there's going to be Gentian Pond, which is a nice pond. Uh, we started around 800 feet above sea level, pretty low. Uh, we're going to get up to 2,200 feet or so, and uh, that's where the pond is. And there's a shelter there too, which usually I avoid, but after my last trip, I had so much fun that uh, even though I have a small tent with me, I am kind of toying with the idea of staying in that shelter. I mean, it's pretty much off season right now. I think the odds of having it to myself are pretty good, but <sighs> we'll see how it plays out. That might be easier setting up a tent and all that stuff and then I think I'll do a base camp and tomorrow I'm gonna go scout around for a commercial airliner that unfortunately crashed back in 1954 it was a DC-3 which is a smaller but still a commercial airliner I think it fits a couple dozen people and uh, about three miles and 2,000 feet beyond the shelter, which is why I'm not doing it today. I'm gonna keep it chill. Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna go up to the summit of Mount Success, and right below the summit is where it uh, made contact with the mountain. Surprisingly though, despite the severity of the crash, um, the majority of the people, well, everyone survived the initial impact. And everyone but two, unfortunately, um, survived the whole ordeal. They actually ended up, it was in winter as well, it was November, but there was a lot of deep snow, even though it was November as well. And they spent three days up there, uh, huddled together before they were finally rescued. And two of them, Unfortunately, they pass away from their injuries after the initial crash. Pretty crazy story. I'll get into the details more when we get to that point. But today, uh, a little more upbeat. Just going to go make a home at the shelter and um, spend the next two nights there. I think I'm just going to have that be my base camp by that pond. And we'll scout around for the airplane from there. But as you can see, this trail is pretty chill so far. And the snow's not very deep, so yeah, let's take these off. That'll be a little better. I'm actually taking a hard left here. Private property ahead on that logging road, so ironically, now that the shoes are off, we're actually getting into a real trail, but Still pretty hard packed, so no regrets. Feels much better to have some weight off my feet. Less noisy too. Getting further away from that logging sounds. And uh, pretty peaceful out here. Trail's packed out pretty well. Not sure the last time, time somebody used this, but Better than plowing through fresh powder. I think the last trail report I saw here online was eh, a week and a half ago or something. And they said it was in pretty good shape. Up to the pond. Couldn't find any reports for up to the summit of Mount Success, but that's okay. Because I'm doing the base camp routine. Uh, the plan is to leave most of my heavy gear beyond or back at base camp and then I'll go up with a later load just some food and water and stuff tomorrow let's enjoy the next few miles and look forward to whatever comes next
nice little open area here. And look, I got some sunshine. Not bad. A couple of random flurries coming down, but pretty much, pretty much done snowing. Little clouds in the skies, but also some blue. Not bad. Take a little sun and open skies before I get back into the woods. My goodness, 45 degrees. I get my sunglasses on. <laughs> Put on, well, take off. I got my Air Force fleece with me for, uh, I don't know, it seemed like the thematically right thing to do. Plus I hike with this thing a lot, but it is too warm. And there it is right in front of us. Mahusik Range. You can see, I believe that's Mount Success over there. Uh, that airplane site is straight ahead of me. So we're headed up into those mountains. They kind of curve over here a little bit. The pond is in there and a little divot. And tomorrow we'll head up to the very top. But we're going to go just a little bit like halfway up them today. Nothing too bad. As the wind picks up. Final mile, final push. Jenshin Pond campsite and shelter is where we're headed. North Road, that's where we came from. Two and a half miles. This is when the, uh, it's been a steady kind of uphill, but now we're really gonna get that final push of elevation up to 2,200 feet. Got a few hundred, a few hundred, a few hours. I wish there was a few hundred hours worth of daylight left, but no. A few hours worth of daylight left. Um, you know, sunset's around 4.30 as it goes behind that cloud there. But, yeah, that way is Dryad Falls, uh, highest waterfall in New Hampshire. But um, from what I read, it's very rain dependent, even in the summer and spring. Um, so right now it probably just looks like some frozen rocks, but... That would be the trail to that, and ultimately, uh, Appalachian Trail is around that way, too. From looking at the trail there, it looks kind of broken out, but it looks like mostly animal tracks. Um, I've read reports up at Gentian Pond here that uh, pretty consistent moose sightings, although the reports I was reading were from several years ago, so it may have been just one resident moose or family of moose that may have moved on since, but a lot of people saying they would see the moose hanging out on the water at night. So that'll be interesting if we see that, um, if that's still occurring. And even report, whoop, as I get my giant pack stuck on that tree limb there, even a report or two saying that uh, there was one moose in particular that would pay a visit every morning stick its head in the shelter <laughs> and say hello which personally would freak me out i think 2000 pound moose eh, that worries me a little more than a black bear if you want me to be honest but <sighs> either way i'm looking forward to cooking some food when i get there that's for sure got my fry pan with me and uh, we'll see what my wife packed me can't do that until we Continue up this hill. steep and slippery not too worried about my footing it's just uh i think i've finally hit the point where i'm gonna break out the uh poles whoops as i lose my cup there but 
these uh, black diamond poles should help. So I'm within a quarter mile, but it's pretty, uh, pretty intense right now. I think we made it. We're certainly up here. <sighs> Jenshin Pond Shelter. I don't know if you can see it there, but it says 1974. I actually found some maps from at least before 1945 that had a shelter listed here. Um, but they must have torn that down and rebuilt this in 74, which is still a while ago, right? Look at that. Got sleeping platforms in there. Looks like somebody stenciled a checkerboard on the floor there. And look at the view right outside. Looking down on the White Mountains. I believe that's the uh, Carter Mariah range over there, which I've done in previous videos. This ain't bad. Pretty happy to be here. Pretty happy to get this pack off. That's right. No fires here. Oh well. Fair enough. Guess that'll be less uh, <laughs> trudging around for me. Don't have to look for firewood. But the view is nice. There's the other side of the shelter there. The view out front. According to that sign, there's water down there. I can investigate that in a little bit. Another cool thing is, I don't have to hang a bear bag today, tonight, or tomorrow. Uh, got a bear box. There's probably a latch over here. Yeah. So, throw my food in there at night. Haven't read any reports that uh, bears are a major problem here, so... Um, I mean, I want to put my food in there no matter what, but also have the peace of mind that probably won't be visited here in the winter months. But uh, didn't really read anything about them coming around here too much in the summer. Just the uh, just the moose sightings, which the pond, I guess, I think it's actually back. It must be over here. Let's take a look. Okay, it's out there through the trees. I think you can get a better view of it. The uh, trail wraps around to the side up there, but I'm seeing some deep post holing around here. I'm not going to go much further without my snowshoes right now. We'll be headed that way tomorrow when we go looking for the plane and uh, mount success. So we'll save that pond view for tomorrow as I carefully get back to the shelter. I think for now, my uh, main objective will be just kind of settling in and making a home for tonight. And then it's early afternoon. I've got a couple hours or an hour and a half or something like that of daylight left. So um, it's early, but I am hungry. So, probably be two dinners in my 
itinerary tonight, so maybe we'll start on dinner number one soon, but this is awesome. Great little spot. Beautiful. All right. Let's uh, get situated. I got my Optimus uh, Polaris multi-fuel stove here. I've showed that plenty of times in other videos in depth, but we're going to kick that off and cook some uh, early dinner. Let's call it dinner number one. So let's see what my wife packed for me. <laughs> oh, it smells good. Uh, I can smell that. Better eat this so the bears don't get to it first. It might come out of hibernation. Some sliced onions. I got a little container, or actually a decent container, two ounces of olive oil. Here's the real kicker. <laughs> a 12 ounce package of thinly shaved <laughs> ribeye steak, otherwise known as cheesesteak meat. So you may not be surprised if you're from Philly. What's gonna come next? There's some salt and pepper. And I got three Philly baked rolls. I got the club rolls here. Um, you know, just so I can cook and eat and keep everything nice and hot. These are uh, Lissios, but not the uh, Amorosos. But I don't know, you tell me which is better. But that's what I got. Either way, they are legit Philly rolls. Oh, I did not know she did this. This is a package of cheesesteak pickles. She sliced them up for me. And I got some dried out Caribbean red hot peppers that I showed in my last video. And of course, can't have cheesesteak without cheese. I got some provolone. If you, uh, I don't know, some of you might like whiz if you're from the Philly area. I've never really done that. I don't know, but that's just my thing. I like provolone, some real melted cheese. So we're gonna make some Philly cheese steaks right here in New Hampshire. Let's get down to it. I'm using white gas and with this system you just uh what I did was a little I, I let a little bit into the fuel cup in liquid form and lit it on fire it's going to heat up the uh priming cup and the fuel tube and once that is burnt off or burnt down and super hot then I can open the valve back up. The liquid should turn into gas and I will get a nice flame. Let's see. There we go. Almost there. Blue flame, that's what we're going for. That olive oil smells good. Get these frozen onions in there first. A little bit of daylight still left. All right, onions look good. Seven degrees 26 it's been uh, fluctuating so the meat was starting to uh, refreeze but we'll see Let's see if we can't get this cooked might take a little longer than it would at home 
I know it's going to taste a heck of a lot better than it would at home. Pickles are starting to freeze. cheese of course but uh I guess we'll do that right now <laughs> that is some melty cheese My goodness, that is incredible. The pickles are perfect. A little crunch, a little heat from the uh, Caribbean red peppers. Middle of nowhere, eating a cheesesteak. Good day one. Good morning, everyone. Not a bad view to wake up to in the morning, that's for sure. It's uh, after 7.30. I've been laying here longer than I want to admit, just enjoying the view, watching the clouds roll along. Uh, it's only 24 Point six degrees, which is awesome. I'll take it. But yeah, I've just been <laughs> laying here in a state of laziness. <clears throat> but I suppose I should probably get up and uh, we should get on with our day here. <sighs> Sleeping pad worked great. Same one for my last trip. All oh, my gear is pretty much the same as my last trip, so that's my. Um, a mock fuel winter light hammock rated down to like one degree Fahrenheit. And I brought my zero degree hammock gear quilt. Um, I'm just wearing my Russian surplus hat to keep my head warm. And uh, my Outdoor Vitals puffy jacket as an excellent pillow. Although I have the Outdoor Vitals inflatable pillow too, but I got a little cold last night. And I couldn't figure out why, because usually this combo is good. But um, I think I figured out it was just because I had my head propped up on that pillow, which I love. But I doubt that pillow is um, winter rated in terms of our value. I'm just assuming because when I switched to the uh, jacket, puffy jacket as a pillow, um, I felt warmer. So I think it was just making my head a little cold to have it up on that inflated pillow. <sighs> but yeah, I feel good. So I guess I'll stare at that view a tiny bit longer and uh, get going here. Get some boots on. All right. Let me show you the advantages of uh, insulating your water bottle versus not because it is 24 degrees or whatever. This was from the car yesterday, and it's, I'd say, 85% liquid still. This liter water bottle for 40 below neoprene insulator is all it took to keep that from freezing and a little shaking. Yeah, there's some slush in there, but it's alive. Regular disposable plastic water bottle. Frozen solid, unusable. So definitely helps to have an insulator for your water bottle. Um, what I think I'm going to do is take my 750 mil uh, pot here. It's going to heat up water out of this guy to near a boil. And then I can pour it uh, 
into the frozen water bottle to thaw it out and make this bottle usable again um, and probably pour it back into here too. Um, and then at some point I'll go down to the stream right over here. Hopefully that's flowing and grab some water, um, which would be real nice compared to melting snow, which would, that's fine. I'm prepared for that, but that would add <laughs> hours of uh, chore time to my situation versus just grabbing some water out of the stream and then throwing in some, uh, I got one here. Um, just little purification tablets. Um, Cause they don't freeze like filters do. Boil water, make breakfast, get some energy. <laughs> Gadget, the uh, AeroPress uh, portable model. I think it's the AeroPress Go, so I can put some real coffee grinds in there and uh, fill up some hot water. That's the mug right underneath of it. Make myself a hot cup of real coffee. One minor hiccup in that plan, though, it comes with little filter discs, uh, a bunch of them. But I either misplaced mine or didn't bring them I'm not sure what I did so this might not be the best review of the AeroPress because I'm not going to do it correctly I did have some MRE toilet paper <laughs> took a square of that and uh, put that in there as a filter disc because I do have regular toilet paper but nothing quite has the consistency of a coffee filter like military toilet paper does it's the best I could do I don't know we'll see what happens <sighs> I also have my uh, meal rehydrating over here. Uh, my peak refuel breakfast skillet with hash, hash kind of thing with potatoes and um, sausage and all that. So I have a nice sausage scramble breakfast and some coffee, hopefully. <sighs> if this toilet paper holds up. Water is actually boiling right now. So. I think I can cut this heat, take the lid off, and they say I'm supposed to pour it in the cup. I think up to the number three. Hope I'm doing this right. And then stir it for 10 seconds. some of it's filtering through already yeah I probably didn't do this right but that's okay <laughs> I know the amount of water in this cup is this pot is the same amount that the cup holds so I'm just gonna keep pouring and uh, it's slowly dripping through and I'll give it another stir with the stir tool and now I'm supposed to take the plunger and push it through and see if the toilet paper holds up. I think it's working. paper I think is intact I don't see any grounds grounds floating around in there and then afterwards I take off that disc and I use the same plunger to push all the grinds out um, <clears throat> so easy cleanup apparently so let's see how this goes the mug feels good in the hand it's uh, not burning my hand but I know that is some boiling hot coffee oh man <laughs> I usually do instant coffee on the trail. It's the first time that I've ever done real. <sighs> mm, even with military toilet paper, that is some good coffee. I think this is going to give me uh, feeling pretty good. 
especially when I bust out this uh, breakfast hash over here. And look at that view. Still can't get over that. This is a pretty awesome spot. Actually, fun fact. <laughs> I just looked down and there was a nice little tin in here or plastic container that holds the uh, filter discs. And my wife packed some <laughs> in there for me. Um, so perhaps t tomorrow or this afternoon, I won't have to have toilet paper coffee. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. But anyway, let's get into some sausage, potato, peppers. This is uh, 640 calories. Um, and then on the trail, I'll probably just bring with, with me some um, trail mix and stuff today. I think I'm almost ready <laughs> to get out there. linked up with the Appalachian Trail now although there's not a whole lot of evidence of that you can see a faint monorail or packed down section of snow in front of me but doesn't look like anybody's used this too recently of course people doing the Appalachian Trail as a through hike you don't really do that in the winter um, but it's still a major trail, so it's hit or miss if somebody else will be out to break it for you. But in my case, I think I'm the first one on this for a little bit. Luckily, not a lot of fresh powder on the ground, which is good. So I'm not really trudging through and uh, using a lot of calories. But honestly, compared to yesterday, having that, who knows? <laughs> Decided to get a little workout and bring some fun gear. So it was probably a 40 pound pack. I, I, don't, I don't even know. I don't want to know. I didn't weigh it. But uh, this little backpack feels great. It's my total pack. It's just a packable backpack. It packs down into itself. I use it for travel and situations like this where I want a separate backpack. So, yeah, the trail's not super easy to follow. There's occasional white blazes, which there should be. That is the symbol of the AT. But, uh, not too many, although we are up on top of some snowpack. So uh, a lot of times uh, the problem is you're up higher in the air than usual. So the blazes aren't actually at eye level where you expect them. And in the White Mountains, sometimes the blazes are even underneath the snow the drifts and stuff in winter. But it's going pretty good. I got GPS for backup. I got a paper map, compass, all that stuff. And it should be 2,000 feet of elevation gain or so. Got some up and downs along the, along the way. There's a blaze right there. And that'll get me to the top of Mount Success. We'll check that out. And then we'll go poking around for this aircraft. Nice, calm, beautiful day, though. There's a little bit of snow flares coming down, too. Just a couple to make things interesting. was actually a pretty brutal uphill section 
even by summer standards, the snow and ice definitely added to it. I am definitely glad, or I certainly was when I was going up it, um, that I'm doing the base camp thing because having my pack on during that probably would have been a little sketch and demoralizing. But then again, some of the sections yesterday were, and you know, when you're in it, you just kind of go with it, right? But I definitely was glad that <laughs> I wasn't doing that today. That's weird. All of a sudden, I got some footprints. Oh, no. Well, no. Wow. That might be moose. I really don't think. Well, no. Maybe somebody was camping over here. I see deer tracks. I'm off the trail. I don't know what I'm doing right now, but that's okay. I don't know. I think those are moose tracks. It's definitely the drag marks of a deer. Well, not definitely. What do I know? But looks like it. Huh. Interesting. Some other tracks over there, but maybe that's actually the trail. Huh. Let's be line towards it the only thing on this trail that I'm seeing right now. It was unbroken for a while, but I'm just following moose tracks now. Speaking of moose, look at that rub. You think that was a deer? <laughs> I'm going to say no. If that was a deer that did that rub, which basically means rubbing its antlers against the tree, uh, <laughs> It would be a monster buck and the biggest one I've ever seen. Uh, no, that must be a moose rub. Look at that. There's another one behind it. I mean, they stripped all the bark off of these things. And just look at the arc. So usually you see a deer rub, you know, you got a picture of their heads going back and forth with the antlers. Yeah, that's uh, two, three, four hand lengths. Pinky. To thumb, pinky to thumb, maybe three. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty decent right there. All right. We are in moose country, people. That is for sure. And the snow keeps coming down. Snow keeps coming down. Coming down. Oh man, this has just been brutal steep. <sighs> the only thing worse than a steep main trail is having just enough snow <laughs> to not be able to tell what's underneath for your footing. It's been rough. <sighs> it's, uh, it's slow going for sure. There is nothing in front of me. Um, Right now, it's pretty obvious where the trail is. Down in the lower land kind of culls or the columns in between peaks or sub peaks, I should say. Um, it, it gets a little harder to follow the trail. I definitely came off of it a couple times because I could tell that I was uh, going deeper into the snow and there was no blazes. But the nice thing is, because I'm burning daylight for sure right now, the nice thing is, um, on the way out, I'm going to have my own tracks to follow because this snow is not falling nearly fast enough to cover my tracks. Um, a, a year ago, in a different part of New Hampshire, I had that problem. Um, it was snowing so hard that on the way out, my own tracks were gone. Um, but that's not the case this time. So I'm going to save a lot of time on navigation on the way out. And also, even if you know you're on the trail, you can have a GPS, um, just knowing the way to go to get around obstacles or um, just being confident that uh, underneath that four foot snow drift is a, a real place to put your foot uh, definitely speeds things up. What's gonna be tough on the way out is <sighs> oh. Just really steep sections that I'm gonna have to be very careful on. And most likely, um, some of that will be in the dark. I have a headlamp with me. I got food, I got water. 
Um, I got a first aid kit. I got water purification tablets. So, yeah. But anyway, um, right now I'm only a mile away from the at least summit area. But that will be a long mile. Those white blazes are, I guess, occasionally covered under the snow stuck to the trees. So, it's slow going. I mean, I knew at a certain point I'd be night hiking. I thought and I hoped it would be on the way back. I never thought it would be on the way to the um, intended goal for today. But we'll see how it goes. Gotta be close. overcast skies and 10 minutes <laughs> 10 minutes till uh sunset so that's fun um <laughs> the good news is we're getting into the crumults or mini trees if you will which is a good indicator that at least in the uh, White Mountains of New Hampshire, that means you're getting towards the top of a summit because the wind is on average too high for the trees to grow. Little view over there, which is uh, nice. And I think we're getting close. Now we got to get to the summit of Mount Success and then um, we're going to hop off trail and go about a quarter mile through the woods and see if we can't find this resting place for the DC-3 airliner from 1954. Um, it's been pretty rough uh i actually like it up here because the wind is blowing away or ha has blown away the snow it seems but there hasn't been a trace of human activity on these trails for quite some time <sighs> which is made for some slow going and trail breaking but that's okay Right now, I guess I'll uh, consult my map and my compass, make sure <laughs> that I'm going the right way, and then try to find where to break off 
from the real trail and find this uh, resting place. To say that I'm uncomfortable with what I'm doing right now would be a little bit of an understatement. <sighs> Following the Appalachian Trail in these conditions was hard enough, but going off trail in search of an airplane crash, um, it's a little sketch. Once again, following animal tracks. And we'll just assume they know where they're going. A little weird though. It is pitch black and I am four miles away from the camp. This is one of the uh, creepier things I think I've ever done. I'm just gonna go a little more this way. Pretty much just following this snowshoe here uh, tracks through the uh, snow. And we'll see what happens. If I don't find it, that's fine. And if I do, that's fine too. We can always come back. But these drifts are getting deep. And it just feels a little weird to be completely off trail. Um, after dark, but we'll see. This is one of the weirdest feelings I've ever had. I just walked into this and it is the fuselage. I mean, I'm here apparently. I don't know how I feel about it, but I am. I certainly didn't take most effective route to get here but it is what it is I've been just following animal tracks oh god this is creepy <sighs> okay um yeah here we are damn that's weird All night, pitch black. That might be a piece of the wing right there. Gotta be careful with this uh, headlamp because if I burn that out, I don't have light to get out of here, but I wanna be able to show you what I'm seeing. And ideally, I should have been here during the day, but is what it is. Strange. So actually, this is a small section. The plane didn't actually break in half like this. Um, I actually found an aerial shot online of this crash and um the whole plane was here but they apparently made a salvage road and took certain pieces out i even looked into following that road up here but 
last trace of it was like 1970 something and even then it said it was hard to follow it's long gone now so i didn't do that which is probably a good thing uh considering how hard it was to get here just on normal trails looks like something is up there let's try to get up there and take a look Aircraft body is all aluminum. Hence the reason that it's still here and not rusted out. I don't know what these glass jars are. That's a little, a little weird. Candles, perhaps. Left by others. That there would be the uh, bathroom toilet crazy long ago probably the uh, electrical connections for the uh, light switches right there and probably the uh, ventilation system right there and you can see the uh, printing on the walls here, because this would have been covered by the interior walls. Cargo section to rear wall, max 1,000 pounds. They actually uh, made a sleeper version of this plane that right around here or so um, would be bunk beds. And you could pull the curtains shut and sleep. Kind of like you're on a Amtrak sleeper train. Jenny O. This thing has been here for almost 70 years. Wilmington, Massachusetts, 1962. A hiker came here. And now I'm here. in the middle of the night. Yeah, strange feeling. Here we are. So, yeah. Maybe it's uh, anticlimactic, I don't know. The age old saying is it's the uh, journey, not the destination. So this is my target and um, it drove me on through the night. Now, <laughs> according to my GPS, I got probably four plus miles to get back to camp and hopefully um, all my gear is intact. No mice have uh, <sighs> rummaged it. So I know I'm looking forward to some dinner. I'm about tired of trail mix. So I'm going to just kind of set a beeline through the trail. Or I should say through the woods. And hopefully hit the trail. Retrace all of my steps. And maybe, just maybe, get back to the shelter. Some comfort and some food. <sighs> Feels good to be back home. Or temporary home at least. A little quesadillas. And some salsa. And uh, yeah, I'm hungry. So <laughs> this is the rest of my night right here. 
have some food, digest, and hit the hay. Not bad at all. Got a little aero press to start my day. Properly made this time with a filter disc instead of a military toilet paper. Nice and hot. I also find that if I, uh, this mug insulates pretty well, but if I want to keep it hot in between sips, I just put the brewing unit on top and it kind of acts like a lid. We got a little breakfast quesadilla. Made this with some uh, provolone cheese this morning. Seemed like the classy thing to do and I had it left over from my cheese steaks the other night. It's been relatively warm on this trip. I mean right now it's 27 degrees. It was only 26 when I woke up. It went down to like 20 last night. Not bad at all, but still, things tend to uh, freeze pretty easily, especially olive oil and salsa. So, when you make your coffee, just leave like a half inch of water in there, pop a lid on it, and uh, throw your olive oil container and your salsa, in my case, in there, and it'll re-liquefy. That is quite nice. Take the salsa out for a little dipping. Another thing, um, speaking of my coffee, I've been using these potable aqua tablets, like I mentioned before, for a while. Uh, they're basically iodine based and they make your water safe to drink. But um, it does have a little bit of an off color to it and um, it's just a little bit of an off taste too. Personally, it doesn't bother me too much. Um, I mean, if I was, a, <laughs> if I went to a dinner party at your house and you served me a glass of that water, I'd probably be like, what is going on here? But in the middle of the woods, it doesn't bother me too much to have that little iodine tinge to it. But nonetheless, um, I picked these up by Potable Aqua as well called PA Plus, two tablets. Um, the other tablets, the main ones, you put it in for 30 minutes to, uh, sterilize the water. These you throw in to tablets per liter and um, you only wait three minutes and it magically turns the water clear again and um, it actually tastes like mountain water again just tastes like water which I guess means it doesn't taste like anything um, which is a good thing so that's nice for making my coffee um, as a little bonus i suppose so i'll probably start carrying uh those pa plus tablets with me as well in the winter but yeah i'm just enjoying some breakfast i mean i got up well i woke up at like 7 30 once again um i was up pretty late because i didn't get back here until god i don't even know 10 o'clock or something like that um so I am in no hurry. It is um, well after nine o'clock. I've just been hanging out, enjoying the view. Um, and I'll hike the three and a half miles out of here at some point. But mentally and physically, I'm pretty beat. So I'm going to stay here pretty much as long as I want and enjoy myself and um, eventually head back down to the vehicle. Just like that, back to the turnstile, back to the Jeep, back to society. 
leaving the trail behind. That was a good trip. I enjoyed it. Uh, but at this point, eh, I don't know what time it is. It's probably uh, going on three in the afternoon. And I am a bit hungry and tired. Ready to relax. So I'm going to dump the gear. And with visions of flame broil goodness in my head, fire this uh, Jeep up and get myself off <sighs> to a hot shower and a hot meal. So, oh boy, that feels good to get off. Yep, there it is, there it goes. No more pack, no more snowshoes. Did things go exactly to plan? Uh, I'm gonna say no, but that's okay. I like the way the trip ended up. Um, it was fun. Would I have liked to maybe explore that crash site a little better? Probably, but I definitely won't forget uh, how I found it, that is for sure. So I think I'm just gonna let that be it is what it is that's how it played out and uh i'm good with it so didn't really show gear a lot on this video um if you're interested i'll put a uh just check out the video description or you can go to syntax77.com i'll put up gps data and all that stuff but yeah that pretty much wraps it up so till next time i'm syntax 77 and right now it's cheeseburger time Approaches. 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 Approaches.